following are extracts from the Jewish State by Theodor Herzl, published as Der Judenstaat in Vienna in 1896. The idea which I have developed in this pamphlet is a very old one. It is a restoration of the Jewish state. The world resounds with outcries against the Jews, and these outcries have awakened the slumbering idea. Everything depends on our propelling force. And what is that force? The misery of the Jews. Who would venture to deny its existence? We are a people. One people. We have honestly endeavored everywhere to merge ourselves in the social life of surrounding communities and to preserve only the faith of our fathers. We are not permitted to do so. In vain are we loyal patriots, our loyalty in some places running to extremes. In vain do we make the same sacrifices of life and property as our fellow citizens. In vain do we strive to increase the fame of our native land in science and art or her wealth by trade and commerce in countries where we have lived for centuries, we are still cried down as strangers, and often by those whose ancestors were not yet domiciled in the land, where Jews had already made experience of suffering. The majority may decide which are the strangers for this, as indeed every point which arises in the relations between nations is a question of might. I do not here surrender any portion of our prescriptive right when I make this statement merely in my own name as an individual in the world as it now is and for an indefinite period will probably remain might preceded right it is useless therefore for us to be loyal patriots as were the Huguenots who were forced to emigrate if we could only be left in peace but I think we shall not be left in peace no one can deny the gravity of the situation of the Jews. Wherever they live in perceptible numbers, they are more or less persecuted. Their equality before the law, granted by stature, has become practically a dead letter. They are debarred from filling even moderately high positions, either in the army or in any public or private capacity. And attempts are made to thrust them out of business also. Don't buy of Jews. Attacks in parliaments, in assemblies, in the press, in the pulpit, in the streets, on journeys, for example, their exclusion from certain hotels, even in places of recreation, become daily more numerous, the form of persecution varying according to the countries and social circles in which they occur. In Russia, impositions are levied on Jewish villages. In Romania, a few persons are put to death. In Germany, they get a good beating occasionally. In Austria, anti-Semites exercise terrorism over all public life. In Algeria, there are traveling agitators. In Paris, the Jews are shut out of the so-called best social circles and excluded from clubs. Shades of anti-Jewish feeling are innumerable. But this is not to be an attempt to make out a doleful category of Jewish hardships. It is futile to linger over details, however painful they may be. Everything tends, in fact, to one and the same conclusion, which is clearly enunciated in the classic Berlin phrase, Judenhaus. Out with the Jews. I shall now put the question, in the briefest possible form, are we to get out now, and where to? Or, may we yet remain? And, how long? I referred previously to our assimilation. I do not for a moment wish to imply that I desire such an end. Our national character is too historically famous and, in spite of every degradation, too fine to make its annihilation desirable. We might perhaps be able to merge ourselves entirely into surrounding races if these were to leave us in peace for a space of two generations. But they will not leave us in peace. For a little period, they manage to tolerate us, and then their hostility breaks out again and again. The world is provoked somehow by our prosperity, because it has for many centuries been accustomed to consider us as the most contemptible among the poverty-stricken. In its ignorance and narrowness of heart, it fails to observe that prosperity weakens our Judaism and extinguishes our peculiarities. It is only pressure that forces us back to the parent's step. It is only hatred encompassing us 
that makes us strangers once more. Thus, whether we like it or not, we are now, and shall henceforth remain, a historic group with unmistakable characteristics, common to us all. We are one people, our enemies have made us one, in our despite, as repeatedly happens in history. Distress binds us together, and, thus united, we suddenly discover our strength. Yes, we are strong enough, to form a state, and, indeed, a model state. We possess all human and material resources, necessary for the purpose. We must not imagine, the departure of the Jews, to be a sudden one. It will be gradual, continuous, and will cover many decades. The poorest will go first, to cultivate the soil. In accordance with a preconcerted plan, they will construct roads, bridges, railways, and telegraph installations, regulate rivers, and build their own habitations. Their labor will create trade, trade will create markets, and markets will attract new settlers. For every man will go voluntarily, at his own expense, and his own risk. The labor expended on the land, will enhance its value, and the Jews will soon perceive that a new and permanent sphere of operations is opening here, for that spirit of enterprise, which has yet to form met only with hatred and obloquy. Now, all this may appear to be an interminable long affair. Even in the most favorable circumstances, many years might elapse before the commencement of the foundation of the state. In the meantime, Jews in a thousand different places would suffer insults, mortification, abuse, blows, depredation, and death. No, if we only begin to carry out the plan, anti-Semitism would stop at once, and forever. For it is the conclusion of peace. Therefore I believe, that a wondrous generation of Jews, will spring into existence. The Maccabeans will rise again. Palestine is our unforgettable historic homeland. Let me repeat once more, my opening words. The Jews who wish, will have their state. We shall live at last as free men. On our own soil, and die peacefully in our own homes. The world will be freed by our liberty, enriched by our wealth, magnified by, our greatness. And whatever we attempt, there to accomplish for our own welfare, will react powerfully, and beneficently, for the good of humanity. Thank you for watching, subscribe to get notifications of new videos, like, share and comment below.